Genesis chapter 12, we're going to read 12 today, but the context here is Jacob leaves home because he was blessed as the firstborn instead of his brother. And his mom and dad told him, your your brother is very angry with you. Live here, go to your uncle's house until your brother comes now. And the Bible says he gets to a place and it's night. He He gathers the stones in that area and forms a pillow for his head, and while he was sleeping, he had a dream. Genesis chapter 28, verse 12. Then he, that is Jacob, dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Everybody say, Jacob dreamed. He saw a ladder that was set up on the earth and he saw angels ascending and descending. Now turn to your neighbor, the one you like the best and tell them, get your own ladder. Hey, Imag, I know you have this scripture towards the end, the scripture before the last one. Let's just read it before we go on. Revelation chapter four, verse one. If you don't mind, let's just read it. The Bible says, after these things, I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice I heard was like a trumpet speaking to me, saying, come up here and I will show you the things which must take place after this. Everybody say, get your own ladder. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for dwelling with us. Thank you for your manifest presence, not just your vital presence. Thank you that we have fulfilled expectations of the miraculous. Thank you that as we hear, O God, our hearts are lit up, our minds are sharpened, our hands are strengthened, strengthened, our, our feet are energized to walk into your best for us. Teach us today as I speak. Let your voice be heard. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. In Jesus' name, amen. there we go. Okay, so I can be weird at times. Let me just come out here, shoot straight. Uh, so I do weird stuff, including this. So every once in a while, when I order like an Uber ride, um, I look to see if the car on the map is, looks like the car that came. Yeah, so if they say, oh, a Toyota Prius, the red one, I'd be like, I'm to see if, if the, not the animated icon is red. You've, you've not done that before? Wow, okay. Feeling all, all kinds of ways now. For those of you who are cool like me, let's call it that. Um, no, it's not the same. You know what I mean? It's just this generic white little car that drives. You know what I mean? I I, I like to see how much OCD went into the whole design. You know what I mean? At least make it red. You know what I mean? Make it blue if it's blue. But nah, it's just white. But even though it's not the same thing, um, it represents two things. One, it represents that the company has accepted your request. When you see that car appear headed towards you, it means the company has accepted your request. Secondly, it means that a car is coming for you. It means that a car is headed in your direction. That's what it means. So one, the company has accepted your request and they've dispatched something. So it has two meanings per se. So just as the animated car on an Uber app or whatever app you use, the Old Testament represents and expresses Two things. First of all, it represents some things that really happened. This is not fiction. Those wars and those things, they really happened. Those are miracles. They really happened. They really happened. And the second thing it is, is a foreshadowing of what is revealed in the New Testament. Um, The Old Testament is a typology of the New Testament. Let me say that again. The Old Testament is a typology of the New Testament. Someone once said, said the New Testament is enfolded 
in the Old Testament, and then the Old Testament is unfolded in the New Testament. Let me say that again. The New Testament is enfolded in the Old Testament, and the Old Testament is unfolded in the New Testament. One of my friends puts it this way. The New Testament, or the Old Testament, is the New Testament veiled, while the New Testament is the Old Testament unveiled. The Old Testament is the New Testament coded. The New Testament is the Old Testament decoded. They go hand in hand. You cannot understand Leviticus. Most of you have avoided that book. <laughs> Leviticus, is that in the Bible? Yes, it is. Leviticus, you cannot understand Leviticus without the book of Hebrews. So next, just go back, don't avoid it, read it, and immediately after I read it, hop to Hebrews. They go hand in hand. You cannot understand the book of Daniel. They are the scary stuff and the revelations, other than the lion thing. The other scary stuff in there, but you can't understand Daniel without the book of Revelations. Um, you cannot understand the Passover in Isaiah chapter 53 without understanding the gospel accounts of the crucifixion of Jesus. It will not make sense to you. They go hand in Everybody say they go hand in hand. Why don't you turn to your neighbor, the one you don't really like, and say, don't avoid the Old Testament. So the Old Testament is filled with typologies that are unveiled in the New Testament. St. Augustine puts it this way, the new is in the old contained, and the old is by the new explained. So they go hand in hand. And this principle applies to the ladder that Jacob sees in Genesis chapter 28. There are two ways that you can look at that ladder. Genesis 28 verse 12 says, He dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached the heavens, and he saw angels ascending and descending on it. The first way to look at it is understanding that Jesus captures this picture in John chapter 1 verse 51. He, he is introduced to Nathanael, and Nathanael is blown away that Jesus tells him, I saw you under the fig tree, I saw you under the tree before you came. And Nathan is like, wow, this guy is cool. This guy is awesome. And he's like, Psh, is that what is tripping you? Let me tell you what's going to happen. Verse 51, and he said to him, I assure you, and most solemnly I tell you, you shall see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Okay, avoid it. Come back. Son of Man, not Son of God. For those of you that need to study that at home, son of man, not son of God. So let's compare the two of them. Genesis 28, 12, angels ascending and descending. John chapter 1, verse 51, angels ascending and descending. Genesis chapter uh, uh, um, 28, verse 12 says that the top of the ladder reached to heaven. Jesus says in John chapter 1, verse 51, that I saw heaven open. You cannot reach into something that is not opened to you. So we see. So the, the question is, where is the ladder in Genesis chapter 28? John chapter 1 verse 51 says that you shall see the angels ascending and descending upon me. So what Jacob saw as a ladder in his dream is unveiled as Jesus in the New Testament. You get it? So Jesus is Jacob's ladder. That's why we say it. Most of you grew up in, in, in children's church. Jesus is Jacob's ladder. And they, did, they didn't tell you how we got there. That, that's how we got there. So Jesus is our access to heaven. Jesus is the basis upon which we connect and communicate with heaven. Jesus, the finished work of Jesus, is the reason that we're in the conversation. We have access to God. And, and when Adam sinned in Genesis chapter 3, the Bible says that God drove Adam and Eve out of the garden. The garden was not just this beautiful place. The, 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 the garden was where heaven touched earth. Because the Bible says that God, just God will come down in the cool of the day. So that was the first heaven on earth. So when God drove them out of the garden... He drove them out of heaven on earth. So the generic and the general access that mankind had to heaven was cut off. 
That's why when Jesus died, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 27, verse 50, and Jesus cried out with a loud voice and yelled and yielded up his spirit. And then, behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom, and the earth quaked and the rocks were split. The word used for the veil, torn, that word torn, is the same thing as the word split from the rocks. So this was not a casual, no, just not that. It was a violent tear, as violent as a rock splitting. God was, okay, okay. The Bible says the veil tore from the top to the bottom. So who is tearing the veil? God. It's not, it was not two men that tore it. It was God that tore it. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? If it was men, it would have torn from the bottom to the top. So man did not create the access to God. It was God when the sacrifice was fulfilled in Jesus that was like, we no longer need this. Do you understand? That's the gospel. So this was not a, a sweet, nice tear. It was a violent tear. It's, it's as violent as some of you when you're trying to break into the Amazon box that comes for you. <laughs> Most of you are like, mm, mm. they make it so hard. Like that stuff is really, it's really, it's as violent as that. God, through the finished work of Christ, removed, removed the inhibition, removed the wall. It was ripped up with violence from the top to the bottom. God was tearing what was hindering us, restoring what Adam and Eve had in the garden. That's why the Bible says in, in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16, so let us therefore, therefore means something has been fulfilled. So based on that, let us therefore come with boldness. Let us therefore not shy away. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace. Come boldly. Why? The access has been made for you. So Jesus is the ladder that grants us access to heaven. Everybody say Jesus is the ladder that grants me access to heaven. So that's the first way of looking at it. The second way of looking at it, um, permit me to stick to the, the mechanism and the function of the ladder. The Bible says that the ladder was set up on earth and the top reached to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it and the Bible says the Lord stood over it. So I want to take note of a few things. The ladder connects earth to heaven. This connection facilitates angelic activity between earth and heaven. And this connection brings Jacob in direct contact with the Lord. The Bible says the Lord was on that ladder. So it connects heaven to earth. It facilitates angelic movement. And it also brings me in direct contact with God. But my focus is where the ladder is set up. The Bible says the ladder was set up on earth. The ladder was set up on earth. The fulcrum of the activity is earth. The trigger of the activity is earth. The arrangement was made on earth, initiated on earth, even if the goal was heaven. Earth did something. Okay, let's, Pastor Victor, prove it. Notice the movement of the angels. It did not say they were descending and ascending. It says they were ascending and descending. That means they were taking instructions or something from here, going up there, and then coming back with something. That means this was the headquarters of that picture. This was the command center of the angelic activity. The ladder was set up on earth. The movement of the angels prove it. They went from Jacob to God, and then from God back to Jacob. So point number one, you might have guessed it, ladder starts on earth. The earth is the command center. The earth is the trigger point. Um, heaven releases and unveils what it already has when earth makes the move. St. Augustine, you might, you might wonder, I like him this week, says without God, man cannot. And without God, man, God will not. Without God, man cannot. But without man, God will not. That means God is waiting on something 
to release what he has. Oh, most of you missed it. That means we are not called to passive participatory roles on this journey. Heaven is waiting on you. Prove it, Pastor Vic, Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. And assuredly, as I say to you, most of you have missed this. Whatever you bind where? Whatever you lose where? It says in verse 19. And I, again, I said to if two or three of you agree on earth concerning a thing, it is established where? So where do we agree? Where do we bind? Where do we lose? Heaven is waiting on you. Most of the things that you're going through is because you've not done anything about it. But why, God? God is like, but why? Like, why? Say something. <laughs> so heaven responds. And when I say responds, I'm being an anthrop- anthropomorphic, about, anthropomorphic about it. It means that I'm looking, giving God human c- c- characteristics. Response in my language, when I say heaven responds to earth, is just putting the activity of heaven in human perspective. Because that's when you experience what heaven has already done. Do you understand? So heaven already has something for you. When you act is when it's released. It's just like when you go to a restaurant and you tell them you want some ice cream. You're going to get ice cream that was already made. But until you place the order, you don't get the ice cream. So you can get into that restaurant and leave, and there was ice cream for you, but it did not come to you because you did not place the order. And it doesn't get made when you place the order. You experience it when you place the order. You understand? Look at the prayer. (laughs) Look at at the prayer in Matthew chapter 6 verse 10. Jesus is teaching his disciples. Verse 10 says, and your kingdom come, and we say this, and we focus on as it is in heaven. No, it says on earth. This This is the concentration. I want here what you have there. So I'm saying from here, give me what you have there. Do you understand? That prayer was prayed from earth. That's why it says our father who at where? What's the direction? Earth to heaven. You understand? Okay. feel a little bit of hesitation. Let's give me some more examples. When Jesus came... It looks like Jesus suddenly appeared. But when you read the later parts of Luke chapter 2, you see that at least two people were praying. Simeon and Anna the prophet. Yes, yes. They were praying. That's why God kept them alive to see the fulfillment of what they had been asking heaven for. So Jesus did not just appear. The 400 years of silence, but two people at least were making demands of heaven to bring about the salvation of Israel. More. Let me give you some more. Moses is activated as the deliverer of Egypt because in Exodus chapter 3, verse 7, he says, God says, I have heard the cry of your people. Verse 8 says, so I have come down. So God was waiting to come down, but he could not come down without the cry of the people. So he said, I've heard the cry of the people, and now I have come down. Do you understand? That's what Daniel gets into a time of three weeks of praying and fasting. And the Bible says he's praying and he's fasting. And Daniel chapter 10 verse 11 says, and he said to me, he says an angel, and the angel says, oh Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for now I have been sent to you. Verse 12, important. And he said to me, do not be afraid, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard. I have come, why? Because of your words. That's why I came. I came because of what you said. So think of everything you've been saying and what has been coming because of what you said. Lots. Genesis chapter 10, God is on his way to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah stops by Abraham's house. I, I, I want that relationship for a, a snack, a, a very quick snack. Abraham is sensitive enough to know that the, the thing he's seen is actually God. That's where we miss it. He sees they have it, they, he eats, they do their whole thing. See, by the way, man, um, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham is like, wait, I, I, I know that city, I know that city. Lot, wow, 
That's where his nephew was. So as they're walking, Abraham is like, um, so sir, um, we, we, we were cool, right? We're cool, awesome. Um, just quick something, if you don't like it, trash it. Um, what if there are like 50 people that love you there? Will you still destroy it? God is like, nah, nah, nah. if there are 50, I, 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 I will not de- 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 destroy it. So okay, 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 okay. I know Lot. I know Lot. Lot, Lot did not preach to 50 people. What if, <laughs> what if there are 45? What if there are 45? Hmm, if there are 45, yeah, I'll do it. They're yeah, working. Okay. That guy. Hmm. He didn't even go to church. What if there are 40? You know what? Cut it, 30. What if there are 30? Let's be honest, 20. You know what? Seeing that we're already on the subject, let's make it 10. If there are 10 people that love you, will you still destroy this place? God says, um, no. God listens to Abraham because Abraham, remember, unfolded, unveiled, no Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Bible says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slack, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Abraham knew God's heart. So he says something that is able to change. Now you have to understand, it's not that he changed God's mind. It's that God invited him to the conversation to see what he would do. So most of you, most of you have a dream about something, not knowing that God has put you on the table of negotiation to negotiate about it. And then we, we, then we get scared that it looked bad in the dream. No, I will show you how bad it is so you determine how good you want it to be. Wow. Okay, most of you don't like that one. Hezekiah. <laughs> Second Kings chapter 20, in the days of Hezekiah, God sent, he was near his death, Isaiah goes into him and, and tells him, bro, get your house in order, you are about to die. Hezekiah is like, wait, what? I, what mm? Get your house in order. You're about to die. Verse 2 says, then he turned his face to the wall and prayed. And the Bible says, as it happened, Isaiah had not yet gone into the middle court. Like he went into the throne. My guy hasn't gone too far. That's how short this prayer was. It was not a prayer. 24 hours later, some time later. <laughs> this was a short heartfelt prayer. Before he was out of the middle, because God like, go back. Tell him I give him 50 more years. Most of you have gotten that. And you go, man, that's it. That's it. Not knowing again, God brought you to the place of negotiation. Do you want to die now? Or... Do you want to get married now? Oh. Then in between in that all, we say things like, there are no good men. Darn it, said it. <laughs> and I have a good man for you. You say there are no good men, so I have nothing for you. In other words, there are no good women. Nobody's loyal. Like, crazy. Okay, that's not where we are. <laughs> so we, we think this is out of the norm until we see the chapter before. Hezekiah is faced by an army, and they write him these threats. Like we're coming to destroy you. And he does the same thing. He takes the letters to God and spreads them before God and says, see, so, so what are you saying? As if God could not read. Like, let me, let, me, let, me, let me put them out. Make sure they're all in order. Read, read, read what they're telling your boy. Just read it. Are, are you going to let this happen? This is how arrangement is. God's like, you know what? Give me one minute. And he goes and the Bible says, angels kill off everybody. The king escapes, goes home, he's kneeling before his altar, his sons kill him. Why? Because somebody was bold enough to set up a ladder on earth to download what heaven had for them. Most of us think, and we say this, it is what it is. Where is it though? Is it what it is here or what it is there? Because the prayer is as it is. So I hope when you say it is, what it is, that's what you mean, and not it is, what it is. You understand? Did, did you get what I meant? Okay. Maybe one more. Joel chapter 2. 
I want to make sure you never forget this in your life. <laughs> Joe chapter 2, I will pour out my spirit. Acts chapter 1, God says, stay in Jerusalem. Further down, the disciples stay there. Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were gathered in one place. They did what Jesus told them to do. They got what Jesus said they're going to get. The reason why you've not gotten what Jesus said you're going to get is because you've not done what he said you should do. Do you understand? Do you really understand? Because I have one more if, if, if you... Acts chapter 12. <laughs> Herod takes James, kills James. He pleads the Jews. He takes P P P P Peter. The only difference between the taking of James and the taking of Peter is verse 5. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God by the church. A set-up ladder is an indication of your intention to receive the fullness of what God has for you. A set-up ladder is your indication to receive the fullness of what God has for you. Ladders trigger angelic activity. Look at all the scriptures, angelic activity. At some point, you have to wake up in your life and say you've had enough. At some point, you have to wake up in your life and say, I need to bridge the gap between prophetic declaration and my real experience. At some point, you have to decide you've been sick for too long. At some point, you have to decide that this marriage has been bitter for too long. At some point, you have to decide that this is the last day I'm going to be broke. At some point, you have to decide your life is going to be different. Let me show you something now. Why, why most of us are suffering like we're suffering. Luke chapter 22 verse 31 says this. Jesus says to Simon, 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 indeed, Satan has asked for you that he might sift you as wheat. Verse 32 says this, but I have prayed for you. So I could have let it happen, but I don't want it to happen. So how do I stop it from happening? I pray about it. I set up a ladder that connects earth to heaven. I said this last week and I said availability does not mean experience. Availability becomes experience when intention is engaged. God's will for your life is not a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's not a self-fulfilling promise. It has to be engaged with intentionality and activity. It has to be engaged actively. In partnership with God's will, you can determine what your life looks like. You can determine what your life, the siege, the attack of the enemy will remain consistent in your life until you do something about it. Until you decide, this is the last day I'm going to make this phone call. This is the last day I'm going to beg for, a, for, 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 for some gap for me to pray for my rent. This is the last day I'm, I'm going to beg for a promotion. I'm going to have so much favor that I'm going to have to turn it down because it increases my, by my tax bracket and I don't want to make other. Can you make it a bonus instead? Can you make it shares? Can you not give me? I, I will start negotiating. You have to decide at some point that your life has to, has to marry up with what God has for you. But we initiate the traffic between heaven and earth. Picture, when you, when you travel and you ch ch check your bag in, behind those walls, there is a, just vehicles that have your bags. For the bags to make it to you, there is a step that has to take place. You have to get the carousel to begin to move. So no matter how eager the guy is out there to send you the bags, and no matter how eager you are here to receive the bags, if the guy does not turn the carousel on, you will not get your bag. Most of, okay, uh, uh, uh. this is not an attic ladder where the ladder falls from heaven so that you can climb on it. This is not, it's not it's said the ladder was set up where? On earth. It, it's not, stop waiting for it to come. Yeah. Like God, do something, do something. You, you, you do something. <laughs> That's how God sounds. <laughs> 
So, so you can be in the restaurant, you're waiting in the restaurant, nice steak, nice food back there, but until you activate the waiters, until you tell them what you want, you cannot receive what they have. Everybody say, God is waiting on my order. Everybody say, God is waiting on my order. How do I know this? Genesis chapter, that's in 28, says in verse 16, then Jacob woke up from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know. He was afraid and he said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. Fellowship and the gates of heaven. Transaction. Another day. Everything that you want is already there. How do I know this? First Peter chapter 1 verse 3 says, and as his divine power has given us. Everybody say all. all. Everybody say all. all. Do you understand what all means? What does all mean to you? What does all? Does all mean all where you come from? Because all means all where I come from. All that pertains to life and godliness. Another chapter 1 and 3, Ephesians chapter 1 and 3 says, And God has blessed me with every spiritual blessing. Where? Where? Heavenly places. Heavenly places. So it's not here. That's why I need to set up a ladder to get there. Yeah. It's there. So God, Jesus took care of granting us general and generic access to heaven. Jesus took care of taking me to heaven. I'm seated with him in heavenly places. But now it's my responsibility to bring heaven on earth. So Jesus did his part, took me to heaven, seated me with him, but now it's mine to bring heaven down here. I need to bring heaven's realities on earth. Everybody say, a ladder starts on earth. When you go home and you want to set up a ladder, watch what you're going to do. You're not going to look at the top. You're going to look at where the ladder is first. You're trying to make sure it's stable here. Because as long as it's here, I can reach whatever God has for me. Point number two, a ladder is personal. Can I have the small ladder, guys? So, in our home, I am Pastor Ambi, our varying heights. So one of the things we went for, the marriage retreat for, I'm joking, again, we're good, was, um, was where to put things on the shelf in the kitchen. I said, babe, there's only so much shelf space where you can reach. Help me help you. And then by the infinite wisdom of God, God said, Jacob's ladder. I'm joking, that's not what he said. <laughs> so we bought a step stool or ladder. So now, guess what the things Pastor Ambi could not reach before? <laughs> By this invention, the world is basically hers at this point. <laughs> what can't she do? But it took a ladder. So you might start by employing the ladder of some other person, which she did. She employed my height, my natural ladder. My <laughs> she employed my height. You can start on your mom's ladder, on your friend's ladder, on your pastor's ladder, but at some point, you have to go get your own ladder. Because there's only so much you can reach climbing on my ladder. Okay, let's, let's bring it down. There's only so much you can experience from God based on my revelation of God. Mine is to show you what the word of God is, to feed you the word of God, to show you what is possible. But yours is to do the work. Yours is to do the work. So some things God has for you in 2024, just outside of your reach. And God is saying, I, I need you to get a ladder. Get a system of bringing heaven to earth. Get a routine of bringing heaven to earth. Because following Jesus is a personal journey, but is done in a communal context. Let me say it again. Following Jesus is a personal journey done in a communal context. I have never seen anyone sustain a viable relationship with Jesus by abandoning Christian community. Never. It can last for a few months, 
maybe a few years, at some point, your theology, your convictions are going to just skew. And I've also never seen anyone grow into God's best for them without making what is communal personal. I've never seen it. So you have to leverage the communal activities that you're a part of to build your own personal system of reaching God. Worship in a church so that you learn how to worship by yourself. Most of you don't know how to raise your hand. Like maybe it's because you don't use deodorant. Please get a good deodorant and then you can use deodorant and you can raise your hand with, without fear. And I, <laughs> I try to be serious in these things. You wake up in the morning and then you pray with us. By 5.30, most of you cannot believe you can wake up by 5.30 to pray. Like, why me? That's when the dream just became, like, a nice breeze just blows you like, yeah, let's go. But you're up. Are you praying? Okay. At least you're up. But the advantage is to leverage that to do it by yourself. Get into a small group. February 11th, they launch. You have people. There we go. You have people who can help you grow your faith. Because sometimes you're going to be by yourself. Listen to the message over and over again so you learn how to study the Bible for yourself. The point is that you leverage what is happening communally for your own personal, for your own personal growth. When athletes for a country train to go to the Olympics, they can train together. You know, all the Americans come together, they train together, they can camp, all of that. But when they get to the race, they're not like, oh, my friend, I don't want to cross my friend because we're friends. No, everybody's running for a personal best. So even though we train communally, we are running for a personal record to see how well I can do by myself. So this is just training. Get your own ladder. Now, how many of you have ever been on a ladder before and then somebody comes to climb the same ladder you're on? You're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Calm down. Like, seriously, guy, like, don't even try me. Then me, I'm, I'm scared of heights. So that's it. please, let's not even, I will punch, I will, I will psh, I, you, I cannot be held accountable for what my body is trying to do to you right now. <laughs> Why? Ladders are personal. There's only so long I can be comfortable with you hanging out on my ladder. Look at that story. Who was there? Who was the only human there? Jacob. One person per ladder. Everybody say one person, one person. per ladder. ladder. Talk to your neighbor and say, get off my ladder. Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. He says it's personal. So ladders start on earth, ladders are personal. And number, number three, ladders grow. The distinguishing property of a ladder is that it has steps. Can I have the other two ladders, please? It has steps on them. So this is Pastor Ambi's ladder. We're going to return it back where it came from. Bring it this way. Yes, so ladders have steps. If you look at the distinguishing thing about these ladders is that they all have steps. Ladders can grow. Ladders speak to development. What you're trying to reach and what you could reach from... What you could reach... <laughs> I will not be on TikTok, amen. Um, <laughs> what, what you could reach from... Just imagine I'm up here. <laughs> Use your imagination. Um... Nah, no way. You can, you can reach what you can reach on this with this. Some things God has for you, 2023 ladders and step stools are not going to work. You have to build up your own ladder. And what are the wrongs on a ladder? These wrongs represent your personal encounters. A man is only as old in the spirit as the number of personal encounters and revelations he has. Not what you learned in church. This does not go for you except God is speaking to you personally as I'm speaking. This does not count for you as a personal experience. This is a communal experience. It's what you do with this seat. You understand what I mean? Because a man's spiritual age is measured by the wrongs of others he has. Now think of it, some of us grew up in places where as a kid you stood against the wall and then they marked you how tall you were. This is what it looks like in the spirit. How tall are you? You cannot go from 2000 to 2001 and blame the pandemic in 2000 and 2001 for how short your, your ladder was. 
And then you want to attempt reaching for God. You're like, God, is, God is not fair. God is not fair. You're not even giving me what you say you're going to give me. It's there. It's there. Your, 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 your ladder is just, your, your ladder is just sh- short. It's a little short. You, you, you can't access it. It's there. It's available. All that pertains to life and godliness is available. I can't beat this loss. I can't beat this loss. Grow up. What we say by grow up is go up. Go up the rungs. Get some new dimensions of God. Reach higher to what God has for you. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 says this. We all with unveiled faces vulnerable continually seen as in a mirror the glory of God are progressively changed from one image. Changed from one image, changed from his, into his image from one degree of glory to the next. Psalms chapter 8, and from 8 verse 84 verse 4 says, Blessed are those who dwell in the house. They will still be praising for they go from strength to strength. The path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter. God is calling you to grow. You cannot be sustained by the same. Go on. Have you tried baby food? This is why I don't do those, those, those competitions in, ba- in baby showers. One of them, I love the couple too much. I volunteered. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> and the game was to eat baby food. And guess what kind of baby food it was. First of all, all of that thing is nonsense. It, how are we giving it to babies? <laughs> and then we wonder why they're like, how? How would they swallow it? That is nonsense. So I'm eating this. I'm like, God, this is nasty. I still have to smile though, like, woo, mm, like it's nasty. You can't do that now. Even when you puree, think of what's the, the baby apple product and what we call the um, um, apple, what's that thing? Sauce. Look at the difference. They are not the same. Uh-huh. Yeah. Not, because what, we have to make it adulty. Most of us are still feeding on baby food as an adult, just on, on a baby ladder. No, I mean, <laughs> oh, you guys are ready for that. <laughs> What's if I just there? On a baby ladder, God, God, this is my walk with God. I love God. Don't do it again. I mean, no. <laughs> Pastor I mean, like, don't do it again. That was the grace of God keeping you up there. But think of it. That's all. So you go from here. Oh, church Mondays are praying and fasting. Then you go up. Oh, and then in June, you're back here. No, that should be the, the fo- something that helps you take it to the next level. So you can reach God's best for you. So everybody gets a ladder. Everybody gets a ladder. So when I say ladder, I mean your prayer life. I mean worship. I mean your consecration. I was talking to a friend of mine and God has him waking up in the midnight to pray for one hour. And all of a sudden he feels God is asking him to do two. He's not even recovered from the one hour. God is like, yeah, so can can we do two today, this year? We're here now. You know what I mean? But that's growth. You've been reading the same two, two verses of Bible every day since you were 18. And you're 40. At some point. <laughs> I didn't know that was going to hit home. Very good. <laughs> oh, how do you do your devotion? You version is wonderful. It's a good, it's a good step stool. Yeah. You version, this is all it is. Step stool for you. So for those of you who pride yourself in you version. It's just a step stool by Pastor Priscilla Sherry. It just gives you a step stool. That's all she does. She's hoping that based on that communion that is going to millions of people, you build your own personal ladder. Yeah. For some of you, you think, oh, I'm here, I've arrived. No, there is more. This is the grace of God. God will meet you at the top of your ladder. Wherever the top of your ladder is, is where he's going to meet you. But the closer you get to heaven... The clearer your vision of him is. The easier it is to get a way to strip yourself of the things on the earth. Because guess what? As you go up the ladder, as you set up a ladder, you, you, you lose affinity for your flesh. Do you understand what I'm saying? So ladders are personal. I'll stop here. So the question is, what are you willing to do in 2024 to get a response from heaven. How are you ready to grow? You can play. Feel free. Thank you. So I sound great. 
Are you ready to initiate something here? Because heaven is waiting for your trigger. Heaven is waiting to see what you do about the fact that your son, your child is misbehaving. About the fact that your, your marriage is not going very well. God is seeing if you're ready to negotiate and decide. Because if you're wondering what God has for you, does God really want this to happen? No, no, he, he has given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. So in case you were looking for a scripture, no, the Bible, he, he wants that for you. He wants the best for you. Maybe this is a, a sickness where, this is, this is a sickness God has given to me to, to humble me. God does not humble us with sickness. Then the death of Jesus, the 39 stripes he took will be in vain. Don't let anybody deceive you into that. Or oh, this is a my cross to bear. Mm -mm, that's not a thing. How would you make your children sick? Now you can be sick as consequence. God told you to go to the gym and exercise. Then you have a high blood pressure. <laughs> you know what to do. Don't worry, you don't even need a ladder. Go to the gym, eat right, you'll be fine. <laughs> Maybe you need this, the step ladder. <laughs> so what's my charge? And I close. Revelation chapter 4 verse 1. After these things I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. I looked and I saw a door standing open in heaven but there was a dilemma. I was too low to get into the door and God had one charge. He told John come up. This door is for you. I want to show you some things, but it's going to require you to come up. The Bible says, come up. Let me show you some things. So everybody needs to get their own ladder. This is where we encourage you. This is where we, we prop like, hey, so for some of you, you're going to have people here who are holding your ladder. That's why you're in, in a group. So as you climb, can somebody come and climb? Somebody come climb this ladder. Sam, come, come climb. Come, come. This is the picture of what it means to be in a small group. Sam, I love you. And, um, but this is what it means. You got this, go, I got you. Sometimes you have people who are holding you up. As you go, go, go one more. This is what it means to be, yes, in a small group. Some of you just need that. I'm not sure. You know, stay there for a bit. Stay there for a bit. <laughs> Some of you just need somebody to help you. Help you up. That's why you join a group. That's why you, you come to church. Because then the, beside you, there'll be other people who are like very high. And instead of feeling intimidated, you go to them and ask them, what's your spiritual discipline? How did you get there? How is it that you can hear God as clearly as you do? Then they'll show you the wrongs that they grew over time. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody say, I, I need to get yeah. my own ladder because heaven is waiting on me to set it up. Put your hands together and celebrate God. Mm -hmm.